Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about amino acids. It's biochemistry time! I have another playlist on my channel called Biology, and now we're doing biochemistry. So you, if you're studying for MCAT, NEAT, DAT, you'll find these videos extremely helpful. Here is the cheeseburger. It has carbohydrate, it has protein, it has fat. Those are the macromolecules, these are the polymers. And then you digest them, so carbohydrates become polysaccharides, and then disaccharides, monosaccharides, and then the monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, and galactose. These are monomers. Proteins become polypeptides, then oligopeptides, then dipeptides, and then amino acids. How about a monopeptide? Well, there is no such thing. Shut up. A monopeptide is one amino acid. Fats or lipids, triglycerides, these are the big ones. And then glycerol and fatty acid, these are the small ones. So while walking down the street, how can I pick an amino acid? How can I recognize the doofus? All right, the doofus will have an amino group on one side and a carboxyl group on the other side. And you have a carbon in between. This is called the alpha carbon. This carbon is attached to R, which is the side chain. And just to balance it, you have to add an H here because carbon requires four bonds. Amino group here, carboxyl group here. This is the side chain or the R group. And this is the one that determines the properties of the amino acids. Chemical properties, that is. Does the order matter? Like, should I write the amino here or here? Like, does it matter amino first or carboxyl first? Yes, of course it matters. A comes before C in English, right? Yep, amino groups comes before the carboxyl group. What's the name of that carbon? Alpha carbon. Here's the beauty of the amino acids. They have their amino group and their carboxyl group attached to the same freaking carbon known as the alpha carbon. Is there an exception? Of course, every rule has exceptions. This is GABA. GABA stands for what? Gamma amino butyric acid. Say it one more time because it was so beautiful. Gamma amino butyric Gamma, you know why we call it gamma? Yup, indeed, because it's a gamma carbon, which is three carbons away from the carboxyl one. So after the carboxyl, you have alpha, and then you have beta, and then you have gamma carbon. In English, we read from left to right. Same thing with amino acids. We read from the amino group towards the carboxyl group. Why do we care? Because this is the order of the amino acid coming out of the freaking ribosome on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, if you remember. The ribosome makes the N-terminus first before the C-terminus. That's why we care. Here are amino acids, they become peptides, and then they become proteins. These are the macromolecules, these are the micromolecules. Polymers, monomers. Let me ask you a question. How many amino acids do we have in our bodies? Oh, I know, Medicosis. My biology professor told me that we have 20 amino acids only. Shut up. Your biology professor is myopic, no pun intended. The 20 amino acids that you're talking about are only the proteogenic amino acids. You have other non-proteogenic amino acids in your freaking body. But what's the difference? Proteogenic amino acid, just by the name, look at the name, proteogenic. So they will make proteins. Oh, yeah, they are incorporated into proteins. Amino acid and amino acid, another amino acid, make them into peptides and then proteins. They are also coded by a genetic codone. Remember these three lovely nitrogenous bases? What are these 20 amino acids that your biology professor told you about? Yeah, the famous alanine, aspartic acid, aspartine, arginine, glutamic acid, glutamine. So you have aspartic acid, aspartine, glutamic acid, glutamine, phenylalanine, glycine, tyrosine, lysine, valine, leucine, isoleucine. You need to remember these three together. Valine, leucine, isoleucine, histidine, cysteine, serine, proline, tryptophan, threonine, methine, my favorite because it gives your Uncle Sam a methyl donor. How about the non-proteogenic? All oh, right, they are not coded by a codon. They are not incorporated into proteins, but they exist, such as ornithine, if you remember your urea cycle, pyrolysine. Where the flip did you get pyrolysine from? From lysine. Selenocysteine, where do you get it from? From cysteine. Seleno means selenium. Pyro, because it contains pyrrolene ring or pyrrolene side chain. Where did homocysteine come from? From cysteine. Do you remember the coagulation factors? Yeah, each one had a name and a number. Okay, amino acids, each one has a name, a one-letter abbreviation, and a three-letter abbreviation. You need to memorize all of this. 
Do you remember the story of the adrenal medulla? Sure. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, nor epinephrine, epinephrine. You see that? That is SAM. Where did SAM come from? Methionine. What is SAM? A methyl group donor. Where did it get the methyl group? From methionine. Because methionine contains methyl, it also contains sulfur. Now that you know the abbreviations, let's talk about sickle cell disease. All right, how do you differentiate between a normal person and a person suffering from sickle cell disease? Normal person have hemoglobin A. Sickle cell disease have hemoglobin S. Why do you call it A? A for adult. That's the normal hemoglobin in adults. How about hemoglobin S? This is for sickle cell. How about the fetal hemoglobin? It's going to be called hemoglobin F. F for fetus. But if Gordon Ramsay were your teacher, F will stand for F me. Normally, as you know, hemoglobin is made of what? Heme and globin. And heme is made of what? Iron and protoporphyrin. And globin is made of what? Amino acids. All right, tell me about these amino acids. Number six should be glutamic acid. That's normal. But in sickle cell disease, the glutamic acid has been substituted with valine, and that's abnormal. We should have glutamic acid. Oops, now we have valine. So we call it this, E6V. What the flip is that? Normally, I should have E at position number six. But unfortunately, now I have V. So when you say E6V, I know that you're talking about sickle cell disease. I have a video about this in my hematology playlist. Let's review some facts about sickle cell anemia from Picmonic. Sickle cell disease, you can see the sickle here. It's an intrinsic normocytic normochromic anemia in Triscus on a normal sized red blood cell. And look at the destruction, that's hemolysis right there. It's due to a point mutation, here is a pointy mutant that happens to be autosoma recessive. This is the recessive rhesus chocolate. This disease is more common in African Americans. The hemoglobin S or the sickled hemoglobin is very sensitive to hypoxia and that's why anytime I'm dehydrated or anytime I have hypoxia, the cells will start to sickle. Here is the low oxygen. Newborns are usually asymptomatic, but as they grow older, they can start to suffer from symptoms. Sickle cell disease will give you resistance against malaria. Here is the malaria female Anopheles mosquito running away. If you want to learn more about sickle cell disease, I have many videos about it in my hematology playlist. Coming up in the next video, we'll talk about stereochemistry. What does it mean to rotate around the plane polarized light? You can rotate to the left, called levo, and you can rotate to the right, called dextro. We'll also talk about classifications of these doozy amino acids. Question of the day is here, try to answer it, and you'll find the correct answer in the next video. If you want to learn more about the pH, check out my acid-base imbalance course on my website, medicosisperfectsnellis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense.